Indonesia, situated amidst the vast expanse of over 17,000 islands in Southeast Asia, Indonesia offers a captivating blend of ancient customs and contemporary living. Its renowned natural beauty, from towering volcanic peaks to lush rainforests, provides a stunning backdrop. However, beneath this picturesque scenery lies a rich tapestry of cultural traditions, some of which may spark curiosity. Today, we embark on a journey to explore 25 uniquely Indonesian customs that reflect the nation's deep cultural heritage. Get ready to be intrigued and perhaps surprised as we delve into the essence of Indonesia's cultural fabric. Number 25. Cohabitation Prohibition If you're planning to bring a romantic partner to Indonesia for travel, it's crucial to consider the local regulations carefully. The Indonesian government has implemented strict laws regarding premarital relationships and cohabitation. Engaging in extramarital affairs can lead to a maximum of one year in prison, while unmarried couples living together may face up to six months behind bars. However, it's important to note that only immediate family members have the authority to report violations to the authorities. Despite objections from both businesses and tourists, the government remains determined to uphold these regulations. They argue that Indonesia's predominantly Muslim population shapes its stance on marriage and family, and the prohibition of premarital relationships is seen as beneficial for the youth. Number 24. The Blue-Eyed Tribe Setting aside the perplexing regulations of the Indonesian government, let's delve into a remarkable feature unique to this country a tribe with striking blue eyes. Bihin Island, the 19th largest island in Indonesia situated in the southeastern region of Suisi, is the dwelling place of the Ban tribe. This tribe is subdivided into smaller clans, some of which harbor individuals with captivating sky blue eyes, a rarity in a nation where the predominant populace boasts dark hair and eyes. This distinctive trait is attributed to Wardenburg syndrome a genetic anomaly affecting eye pigmentation due to inheriting a specific genetic mutation. With an estimated occurrence of 1 in 42,000 individuals, this syndrome can also manifest as hearing impairment. On Bihin Island, members of the Ban tribe all share this, striking eye color. To the uninformed observer, these azure eyes may evoke notions of extraterrestrial origin or artificial creation. Number 23. Homeland of Dragons If you need more clarification on the existence of dragons, join me in Indonesia, where you can witness Komodo dragons roaming freely in the wild. Komodo Island, recognized as one of the new seven wonders of the world, is their exclusive habitat. These monitor lizards, often referred to as dragons, can grow up to 3 meters long and weigh up to 150 kilograms. They prefer hot, dry environments and are most active during the day with a diet consisting of various animals. While they may appear fascinating, Komodo dragons are dangerous, possessing a venomous bite. Tourists should follow safety guidelines, maintaining a safe distance. The best time to visit is from April to December, when the climate is dry. A two-hour island hopping tour to Rinka Island offers ample opportunities to observe these creatures. Number 22, the Sea Gypsy Tribe. How long can you hold your breath? One minute? Three minutes? Even managing five minutes is considered extraordinary. But did you know in Indonesia, there exists a tribe capable of holding their breath for tens of minutes or more? The Baho are one of the world's unique tribes, leading a nomadic life around rivers and seas without nationality. As seafaring experts, they inhabit Southeast Asia, spanning from Indonesia to the Philippines and up Malaysia. Renowned as exceptional free diving experts, the Bacho's lives are intertwined with the ocean. Their traditions revolve around protecting the sea, regardless of age or gender. Bacho individuals can spend up to eight hours a day diving beneath the sea, with some dedicating 60% of their time underwater. Recent research suggests that the Bacho's bodies have adapted to their underwater lifestyle, with larger internal organs like the spleen aiding in oxygenation during dives. This genetic trait allows them to hold their breath for extended periods, crucial evidence of their evolutionary adaptation to the sea. Bajo babies start free diving training from a young age, with some as young as three or four years old joining their parents in the sea. Their lives revolve around fishing and diving for valuable resources with primitive tools. Despite their centuries-old pneumatic sea life, 
the Bajo remain detached from modern society and lack citizenship rights and social welfare benefits. Number 21. Chili Smoothie Would you believe that there's a dish so potent that merely looking at it might give you indigestion? Meet the chili smoothie from Indonesia. At first glance, it resembles a typical smoothie, but with a thick consistency and a fiery secret. It's made entirely of chili, known as togi. It's a popular snack in Indonesia, primarily crafted from ground bird's eye chili for its intense spiciness, though it includes crispy fried tofu and other ingredients like shallots. And garlic, chili remains the star. Mixed with pure chili water, it's shaken vigorously before consumption. Many are taken aback by this chili-packed concoction, expressing surprise at its boldness. Some wonder if its flavor can shine through the overwhelming spiciness, while others simply feel their stomachs churn at the sight. Would you dare to try it? Share your thoughts with us. Number 20. No handshaking and no left hand. Shaking hands when meeting someone is a common gesture in many countries, especially in developed nations, signifying civility. However, in Indonesia, particularly for women, it's considered taboo. Indonesia, being the most populous Muslim-majority country globally, sees Muslim women often uncomfortable with unfamiliar men touching them. Ideally, in Indonesia, a smile and a nod suffice for greetings. Only reciprocate a handshake if someone extends their hand first and be mindful not to grip too firmly. Additionally, using the left hand is frowned upon as it's deemed unclean and lacking hygiene in local beliefs. It's considered offensive to use the left hand to handle objects or money. To navigate Indonesian customs smoothly, be cautious with your hand gestures to avoid unintentional offense. Acting hastily could lead to undesirable consequences. Number 19. No revealing attire and public displays of affection. No matter how attractive your attire may be, it's strongly recommended to opt for modest clothing when visiting Indonesia, especially when entering restaurants and religious temples. Revealing clothing such as spaghetti straps, low-cut tops, shorts, and short skirts are strictly prohibited. Similarly, men should avoid wearing shorts and tank tops in public places or religious sites, adhering to the dress code emphasized by the Indonesian government. Displaying affection in public is also discouraged, as it can make Indonesian locals uncomfortable and may be perceived as indecent. Actions such as hugging and kissing should be limited, and maintaining a respectful distance from others is essential. Some couples have experienced unpleasant incidents, including being subjected to objects thrown at them for openly expressing affection in public. It's advisable to avoid such situations to ensure a pleasant experience during your visit to Indonesia. Number 18. No gambling. While many tourist destinations worldwide permit gambling activities, Indonesia strictly prohibits any form of gambling. Even participating in simple betting games could result in severe consequences. It's crucial to avoid any spots or invitations tempting you to engage in such activities. The penalties for gambling in Indonesia vary from fines and deportation for minor offenses to imprisonment for more serious violations. In Indonesian culture, card, games and gambling are perceived negatively and associated with idleness and lack of proper employment. Furthermore, encountering devout Muslims could escalate the danger as gambling is considered one of the most strictly forbidden activities in Indonesia. It's imperative to remember and adhere to these regulations to avoid legal and social repercussions. Number 17. No pork consumption. Once again, the prohibition of pork in Indonesia is rooted in Islamic principles. According to Islam, pork is deemed unclean compared to other livestock due to several factors. Firstly, pigs have a faster digestive system resulting in a less effective toxin elimination process. Secondly, pigs lack sweat glands, allowing disease-causing germs to accumulate in their fat tissues, blood, and meat. Lastly, pigs exhibit a behavior of exchanging mates, which is considered ethically unacceptable in Islam. Islamic scholars believe that consuming pork can adversely affect human nature. In alignment with Islamic beliefs, the Indonesian government restricts the consumption of pork in the country, despite the significant economic losses incurred by Indonesian farmers. Number 16. Strictest Traffic Rules in the World In Indonesia, wearing a specific type of thick and secure head covering, a helmet, is a common practice. 
Despite costing around $13, which is not considered expensive, helmets are crucial for safety and avoiding trouble with traffic police. The strict compliance of the people has transformed helmets into a symbol of traffic civility in Indonesia. However, this culture is not solely driven by public awareness, but is primarily enforced by the country's extremely strict traffic laws. Under Indonesian law, motorbike riders not wearing helmets can face fines of around $500, confiscation of personal identification, prohibition from using the road, or even imprisonment for up to one month. While these laws may appear severe, they have proven effective in a country where the motorbike-related mortality rate is the second highest in the world reaching 73.6%. Number 15, Macabra Market. If you cherish animals, steer clear of Indonesia's Toman Market. Once a tourist hotspot for selling wild animals like bats and snakes, it's now notorious for trading cats, dogs, and monkeys. Despite its traditional market appearance, Toman's grim reality includes scenes of animal slaughter and unsafe meat preparation. Located in North Sulawesi, it caters to the Minahasa ethnic group's taste for exotic dishes, including snake and bat meat. Despite locals' claims of selling safe food, the market poses health risks from consuming wild game. It's best avoided by animal lovers. Number 14. Marriage without dating. It may seem unbelievable, but in Indonesia, it's not uncommon for people to become husband and wife after just one day of knowing each other. This trend is gaining popularity among young people in the world's largest Muslim country. Skipping the dating phase and going straight to marriage is becoming more common, with success stories of marriages without dating circulating on Indonesian social media. One such story involves Muhammad Alvin Psi, the son of a well-known polygamous preacher, who married a 19-year-old girl after a brief conversation. While supporters argue that this trend empowers women to choose life, partners without compromising in premarital relationships, critics warn that marrying based solely on reason may lack genuine emotional connection and could potentially put the woman in a vulnerable position. A successful marriage in such cases requires both partners to adhere to Islamic teachings regarding the duties of husbands and wives. Failure to understand each other's rights and responsibilities may lead to inevitable divorce. Number 13, the Golden Island. Before hastily buying a plane ticket to Sumatra, Indonesia, with dreams of getting rich, it's important to understand the context. In recent years, numerous precious artifacts made of pure gold worth millions of USD have been discovered along the Mui River in Sumatra Island. These findings have led archeologists to believe that this area was once the legendary empire of Shaya, often referred to as the Golden Island in Indonesian folklore. The continuous discoveries of valuable artifacts have sparked hope among scientists that evidence of the Shia Empire's existence has been found. Local divers, while underwater fishing along the Mui River near Palang City, have unintentionally stumbled upon these treasures, ranging from gold jewelry to Buddha statues adorned with precious stones dating back to the 8th century AD. Despite these discoveries, the mystery of why the Shia Kingdom vanished continues to baffle historians. While the allure of finding gold may be tempting, it's essential to approach such endeavors with caution and respect for historical and cultural significance. Number 12, widespread occurrence of shamans. Living in Indonesia, one quickly notices the prevalence of shamans in the country, fueled by the deeply ingrained superstitions of the Indonesian people. Unfortunately, many fall victim to the false promises of these shamans, leading to financial ruin, or even loss of life. Exploiting the superstitions prevalent in this predominantly Muslim country, fraudsters use mystical methods to deceive their victims, swindling their assets, and in some cases, causing harm. In April 2020, the Indonesian police arrested a spiritual leader, accused of killing at least 12 people, with bodies found buried in his garden in Banjangara, central Java. This shaman, who promised miraculous financial assistance to clients, resorted to poisoning them when they felt no spiritual experiences and sought refunds. Ultimately, these shamans are motivated by money and lack the supernatural powers that superstitious Indonesians believe in. It serves as a stark reminder to be cautious and skeptical of individuals claiming to possess mystical abilities. Number 11. Restrictions when giving a gift. In Indonesia, gift giving is nuanced. 
Avoid sharp objects and give modest gifts representing your country or province. Unwrapped. Recipients typically say thank you and set gifts aside without opening them until the giver leaves. Gifts are exchanged during occasions like returning home or expressing gratitude. Indonesian Chinese appreciate food gifts but not during parties. Candy or fruit baskets are suitable. Recipients may refuse gifts up to three times. Avoid odd numbers of flowers, as they're considered unlucky. When men give gifts to women, it's common to state the gift is from their spouse to prevent misunderstandings. Number 10. Scraping Therapy Kerokan, a traditional Indonesian cold treatment, involves scraping the back with a coin to release masuk angin, wind believed to cause illness. The red marks left behind are thought to be evidence of the wind being expelled, though scientifically, it likely just irritates the skin. Despite lacking strong scientific support, Kerokan remains popular for its perceived comfort and cultural significance. Number 9. Tooth Filing In Bali and parts of Sumatra, a unique custom called mendum involves filing down the front teeth to make them blunt. This practice goes beyond just aesthetics. It's rooted in the belief that sharp teeth can contribute to aggressive tendencies. By blunting the teeth, mendum is seen as a way to promote gentleness and inner harmony while also achieving a certain beauty standard within these communities. Number 8. Mutual Cooperation Gotong Royong, a cornerstone of Indonesian culture, embodies the spirit of cooperation. It's not uncommon to see entire communities coming together for neighborhood cleanups, lending a hand in house construction projects, or working collectively on tasks that benefit everyone. This emphasis on working together fosters a strong sense of community and shared responsibility. Number 7. Voting with Flair Forget stuffy booths and long lines. In Indonesia, casting a vote is a festive and inclusive experience called nioblos, which means to cast a vote. Polling stations transform into celebrations, adorned with colorful decorations and balloons. Food is a big part of the experience too, with many stations offering communal meals or snacks for voters. Nioblos becomes a chance to celebrate democracy, share a meal with neighbors, and strengthen the sense of community, making it a truly unique way to fulfill your civic duty. Number 6. Flower Bath In Indonesia, Javanese brides participate in a beautiful pre-wedding ritual called Mandi Kembang, which translates to flower bath. Imagine a bath filled with fragrant blooms, creating a sensory experience that symbolizes cleansing and purification for the bride before her special day. The calming ceremony, enveloped in the beauty of the flowers, becomes a truly special way for the bride to prepare for her married life. Number 5. Black Magic Black magic, known as Ilmu Hitam or Dukun, maintains a significant presence in rural Indonesian communities despite official condemnation. Practitioners, called dukuns, are believed to possess supernatural abilities and offer services ranging from healing and protection to inflicting harm upon others. Rooted in local folklore and superstitions, black magic rituals often involve chanting incantations, using talismans, and making offerings to spirits. These practices persist due to a combination of limited access to modern healthcare and education, cultural norms emphasizing traditional beliefs, and social dynamics favoring communal solidarity over individual rationality. Despite government efforts to combat superstition, black magic remains a deeply ingrained aspect of Indonesia's cultural fabric, reflecting the enduring influence of tradition and spirituality in shaping society. Number 4. Poisoned Fishing in certain coastal regions of Indonesia, fishermen employ a traditional fishing technique known as mabuk laut, or drunk at sea, where they utilize a poisonous substance derived from specific plants. This substance is released into the water to stun fish, rendering them more accessible for capture. While this method is effective in securing a catch, its application poses significant risks to marine ecosystems. The poison not only affects the targeted fish, but also endangers other marine life, disrupting the delicate balance of the underwater environment. Additionally, the long-term consequences of this practice can include the depletion of fish populations and damage to coral reefs, threatening the livelihoods of local fishermen and the sustainability of coastal communities. Efforts to promote alternative, environmentally friendly fishing practices are crucial in mitigating the adverse impacts of poisoned fishing and preserving marine biodiversity in Indonesia. Number 3. 
Tana Toraja Funeral Rituals In the Tana Toraja region of Sulawesi, Indonesia, funeral rituals are elaborate affairs that can span days or even weeks. Families meticulously save money over the years to ensure the proper execution of these ceremonies, which hold immense cultural and spiritual significance. Central to these rituals is the belief in ensuring a smooth transition for the deceased into the afterlife. As part of the ceremonies, buffaloes and pigs are ritually slaughtered as offerings to accompany the departed soul on their journey. These sacrificial animals symbolize wealth and are believed to provide assistance and protection to the deceased in the afterlife. The entire community participates in these funeral rites, which involve intricate rituals, traditional dances and feasting, serving not only as a way to honor the deceased, but also as a means of reinforcing community bonds and social cohesion. Number 2. Pet Cremation Ceremonies in Bali, Indonesia, there is a deeply ingrained cultural practice of conducting pet cremation, ceremonies with the same level of reverence and solemnity as those held for human relatives. This tradition underscores the profound spiritual beliefs of the Balinese people regarding the afterlife and the interconnectedness of all living beings. Pets are considered valued members of the family, and their passing is marked by elaborate rituals aimed at ensuring a peaceful transition into the next life. These ceremonies often involve prayers, offerings, and intricate cremation processions during which the deceased pets are honored and bid farewell. By treating pets with such reverence in death, Balinese families demonstrate their belief in the continuity of the soul beyond physical existence and their commitment to honoring and preserving the bonds of love and companionship shared with their animal companions. Number 1. Dreadlocks in Papua, Indonesia's easternmost region, people cultivate natural dreadlocks steeped in tradition. Here, hair is allowed to grow freely, sometimes for years. Over time, it starts to lock naturally, aided by the occasional application of tree resin to encourage the strands to bind together. These aren't just a fashion statement. Rambut gimbal is a long-standing tradition with deep cultural roots in Papua. The unique hairstyle holds a special significance for the Papuan people, adding a fascinating layer to the rich tapestry of Indonesian customs. If you're feeling like you've just scratched the surface of Indonesia's weird and wonderful world, you're absolutely right. This incredible nation boasts a treasure trove of unique customs and traditions waiting to be discovered. So, what's next for your Indonesian? Adventure? Dive deeper. Explore online resources, connect with Indonesian communities, or better yet, plan a trip to experience these cultural gems firsthand. Indonesia is a country that rewards the curious, and the more you delve in, the more fascinating it becomes. Don't forget to leave a comment below and tell us which Indonesian tradition surprised you the most. We love hearing from you.